You're not crazy. You have a histamine intolerance. You're not crazy. You have a histamine intolerance. If when you get anxious, your entire chest and neck breaks out in like red splotchy hives, you need to get checked for histamine intolerance. If Hi, my name is Dr. Rubin. I'm a board certified allergist. I'm going to clarify this term histamine intolerance because it's floated around social media and there's a lot of misinformation regarding this term, so I hope I can shed some light on this to help point people in the right direction. While histamine intolerance is recognized by many people as a disease, it is not universally accepted as one because the testing and the underlying pathophysiology, meaning the mechanisms of the disease, are not well validated scientifically, and I'm gonna go over some clinical data for you to show you why that's the case. But first, let's talk about histamine and its role in the body. This is a naturally occurring chemical released by cells of your immune system called mast cells and basophils, but it's also released a little bit by neurons as a neurotransmitter in your brain. So it has a lot of different functions, from helping with the immune response, it causes allergic reactions, causing symptoms such as hives, swelling, itching, and redness. It's involved in your gut with stomach acid production, and it's involved with the sleep-wake cycle as well as your regulation of hunger. It is true that histamine can cause severe symptoms. There's actually been studies where they give histamine through an IV and it causes some severe symptoms. We also know that people can develop scombroid poisoning from improperly stored fish because the fish, uh, the muscle converts histidine to histamine. When you eat it, you get a huge dose of histamine that can lead to symptoms that look like anaphylaxis. So the concept of histamine intolerance is that some people are a little bit more sensitive to this chemical histamine, often in what they're eating in their diet from things like cured meat, alcoholic beverages, aged cheese, and various fruits and vegetables could have higher levels than usual of histamine. So people are told that you should have a low histamine diet or take a supplement of something called DAO or diamine oxidase because it's one of the enzymes that can break down histamine. But is this something that actually is helpful for people? And I'm gonna go over one study right now. In this study, they took 59 people who were concerned that they had histamine intolerance because they had various symptoms such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, headaches, dizziness, shortness of breath, hives, etc. And they had them go on a low histamine diet for two weeks, and then they had them do a specific type of challenge where they were blinded, meaning they didn't know what they were taking, of peppermint tea that either had a placebo in it or histamine doses at three varying levels, and then they recorded the symptoms reported shortly after taking this tea. What they found was that 62% of patients had symptoms when they were taking placebo, and they were able to exclude almost 85% of people of having histamine intolerance. Only four cases of histamine intolerance was possible in this study, and when they measured the levels of diamine oxidase, which is part of the metabolism of histamine, there wasn't really a good correlation between diamine oxidase activity and having plausible histamine intolerance. Part of the issue with histamine intolerance is that the breakdown of histamine occurs through multiple pathways. It's not just diamine oxidase, but there's multiple other enzymes that are involved in breaking down histamine, such as histamine and methyltransferase. And so, if we were going to really figure out what's going on with the breakdown of histamine, we really need to be checking for multiple enzymes, but even then, it's hard to really validate this at this time. There's just not a lot of studies on this, and we need to look into this further. But there are other diseases that may look like histamine intolerance. A classic example of this is mast cell disorders, like mast cell activation syndrome, mast cell cytosis, be H. pylori infection. There's many other potential underlying causes that have to be ruled out before thinking about this. Another challenge is trying to figure out what is the best low histamine diet that somebody could have and also maximize the amount of nutrition that they need. It can be very difficult to figure out what that exactly is. And so before you go venturing into this type of space, you gotta make sure that you're ruling out all the other potential causes before pursuing this because trying to pursue a low histamine diet can be very challenging. I know it can be really frustrating to try to figure out what is the underlying cause of specific illnesses, and sometimes it takes a long time before testing can declare what's going on, especially with autoimmune diseases. So patients may be needed, you may need to end up seeing multiple specialists, have different thoughts about what the overall picture is, but I just wanted to give you a little bit more understanding about this concept of histamine tolerance in case you start to look into this further.